years of experience in sales and marketing management. He's the co-founder and partner of several companies, including Digicash Payments, GDS.com, uh, Ampels, and now Phenology created in 2017, which was not wrong. No, right. Uh, why regulations are an opportunity actually for private banks, for web managers, I invite you to discover it now, a complementary presentation with all the other we had the chance to have today and right after the, the coffee break. Thank you, Jonathan, to join me on stage and thank you to give him a warm welcome then. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, thank you for these kind words. I must say, Professor Hartman, you made my life so much harder. <laughs> Your presentation was brilliant, enlightening, but you also, I'm the last man standing between this audience and the coffee break, so I'll have to make it very short. Um, before I start going through the presentation, maybe just a, a few words of um, who we are, what we've done. Um, I'm not the only, as, as my title is co-founder, I'm not the only uh, person there. We have three other partners who built different companies. So we started back in 2006 with Ampos, which is a company that is uh, nowadays running 95% of the micro payments and messaging in Luxembourg. So it's uh, dealing with 100,000 and millions of transactions yearly, and we're operating that. Uh, so that was really our first experience <coughs> in the world of micropayments and engaging also with regulated entities. Uh, six years later, we started DigiCash and there we were uh, engaging this time with, I would say, the world of regulated entities for good as uh, we managed to set up this payment, mobile payment in ecosystem in partnership with the retail banks in Luxembourg. And uh, uh, I must say, I'm very proud that DigiCash is one of the three uh, initiatives in Europe where over 30% of the entire population of the country is actually using mobile payments. Together with um, Sweden and Denmark, these are the only three countries where you see such attraction about mobile payment. I think that it's also because of the specific setup engaging the um, banks towards the end customers directly instead of trying to competing with them. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, we started to, in 2017 Phenology, which is basically a reg tech company. Uh, a reg tech company with a very specific positioning where we want to re-intermediate or at least create an environment in which the banks can engage with fintech providers. So it's, I think, key here to look at um, innovation and um, fintech not only as something that you can do on your own. You have to basically rely on external experts. Um, so working with banks was very interesting. I think um, we, we came to a, a few lessons learned there. Uh, the first You'll always use a cat in a presentation. It's always good. It's like on the internet, cats, you get clicks. So I get the attention with a cat. You look to have, you have to look and focus on the real pain, where it hurts. And um, I think Professor Hartman said something very important there. Uh, you have to be, as a bank, uh, very efficient in what you do. So. Um, Going all over the place doesn't make sense today. You have to be very focused on the true pain points. Um, you also, and I started scratching that idea um, earlier, think ecosystem. Um, nowadays, the idea of trying to build everything internally doesn't make any sense. Um, the, the pace is, is increasing and you cannot also rely on one specific provider. Exclusive agreements was true probably in the 80s, uh, but nowadays it doesn't make any sense. You have to remain open and ready to work with different partners. Uh, speaking about partners, that is also a key element. Um, the pace is faster, reducing internally the decision and implementation process is key. 
you see how the uh, customers expecting new products faster and faster. They've got a benchmark, which is basically Facebook and all these players. If you're too slow, then they'll get very disappointed and probably focus and go towards the, the, the um, players who work very hard and at a very high pace. You, Professor Hartman was also mentioning um, China. I think that they're giving the tone, basically, with the WeChat and Anpay and, and so on. So they were gave, they're, giving, they're giving the tone because of their products. They focus on the products. That is the key. You cannot see that as a CSR part. It's really, the main focus is getting real products, good products on the market. Get something that is going to be used, either internally because it's going to help your uh, employees, your collaborators uh, be more efficient, but also your customers are expecting that for you. So the product is the key here. What, uh, it's probably a bit um, uh, um, there, um, a big, big phrase here, a big sentence saying what's the challenge for a bank in this world, I would, I would say, and this specific change is happening. We all agree with that. Um, digital digitization, the digital products, this is not only for customers, but it's also internally for the banks. Use, using new tools, more efficient tool is Nowadays, something that, that you cannot say convey. Uh, regulation. You're facing, as a bank, heavier regulation. I just picked one article out of hundreds about this topic. And I'm reading this quote, which I think is very interesting. It took 30,000 plus pages and 1.7 million paragraphs to describe the rules in MIFID 2. 17 million paragraphs. Much of this cost has been spent interpreting and rewriting the rules into business text and computer code. The cost was of 2.5 billion to date to implement. That is huge. And one other aspect which is key, over 50,000 regulations were published across the G20 between 2009 and 2012. In 2015, it rose to over 50,000 in one year. That's incredible. And while well, I quote uh, uh, the advisory company, Bain & Co, they estimate the government's risk and compliance spent accounts for 15 to 20 percent of the run the bank cost and 40 percent of change the bank cost so it's huge the impact is huge that brings us to the dilemma what is a bank going to do either invest in products for the clients or investing in regulating and implementing the regulation. The, the other challenge here, I think it's also basically linked to your technical, or the bank's technical environment, which is nowadays not really open, and you have to switch from this type of environment to a modular one, something more open, where you can engage with uh, external pro providers, optimize the cost and efficiency. So, there, there are some solutions, and more and more we're talking about, indeed, artificial intelligence and so on, but before that, I think the lower uh, level of it, layer of it, is the API. So engaging, being able to engage with APIs. What are APIs? They're basically building blocks that you can just con consume, and that you do not have to redevelop internally. So if we look at how to consume, you have to you need the technical environment, which is PFS um, compliant, to be able to consume these APIs. That is what we're providing nowadays with most of our partners. The big advantage here in Luxembourg is this PF, PFS um, license and um, that enables players such as us to run the due diligence, to audit the 
providers so that the, the bank does not have to do all that work. So basically, they, they gain time into the technical implementation, but also the admis administrative implementation. That is key. So if we look at some of the words were, were thrown uh, in the previous presentation, we, we're talking about PSD2. This is one good example of what we've been doing for the past month. We're providing this PSD2 module to 30 banks across nine countries in Europe Basically, the implementation time is being less than two months for them to be um, compliant with the first milestone, which was the sandbox. Then implementing this, actually, we evaluated, and there was a, a, a survey, I think, uh, by um, one of the advisory firms saying that if the bank wants to do that internally, it would equip be equivalent to 1,000 man days work. So that is quite um, substantial. Using it by an external provider reduces it by 10 times, or to probably even less than that. KYC, basically, I think we mentioned that the, in the private bank, it doesn't make sense to disintermediate the banker itself, but op op um, optimizing and having a uh, augmented private banker is probably the way you do it. So consuming, using, these building blocks can be very efficient to um, onboarding new customers. Where it's even, I think, more interesting is when it comes to updating your customer uh, data. Talked about NIFI 2, Crips, but there's you know, Gaffy that is coming. I think that there, by using different modules, you can <coughs> do that in a much more efficient way and in the faster, um, I think that the clock is ticking, so there, um, using external providers is probably a, a good way of doing it. We also mentioned recently uh, ID um, and, um, I mean, sorry, uh, consent and e-signatures. Um, this is something that is um, nowadays used a lot and more and more and will become something that the customers are expecting. They don't want to have to sign with their, with their pay. If they have these digital tools, they have their smartphone phones, they have the computers. Having electronic signatures is a way of doing it in a much more efficient way and relying on trusted partners. So what's next? So Charlotte, I have one minute left. So basically, let's have a talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>